Hey everybody, welcome into Northern Life. Happy to have you here with us on this Tuesday. I was thinking about this, being that it's Tuesday, we're only like four weeks away from the election. Yeah, yeah. Whoa! Today. Yeah, yeah uh, it's wild how quickly that sneaks up. So if you're not registered to vote, Make sure you are. Get out there and do yeah, so. Yeah, that's important. I'll tell what I'm ready for, those political ads to go away. I'm so <laughs> sick of them on the radio, yeah. on the TV. But yeah, it's that's going to be nice when that all goes away in a month. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It'll be here before we know it. Yep. Well, hey, today taking a step-by-step -step painting class on the show, Carly from Northern Exposure Art joins us here in studio for this week's Blindfold. We had a great time getting to paint the lift bridge and learn all sorts of different techniques, too. I think most of them turned out well for the most part. Yeah! Yeah, yeah I'm with you. <laughs> we'll say that. And later, uh, we're going to be sharing our Northern Life weekends, including the opportunity to talk about Hunter McCullough's side gig that we maybe don't talk about enough here on the show. Ooh, oh. spicy. I was going to say scandalous, but it's not very scandalous. Yeah, it's not that scandalous, no. Yeah. It's actually very on the, on the up and up. It's very, it's very wholesome. Yes. Yeah. But uh, first, uh, big thanks to you all for coming out and saying hi to us in Bayfield, Wisconsin. Our team had a fantastic time getting to go live from Apple Fest back on Friday, including the three of us here being together on the news at 4 o'clock. Yeah. Aww, that, holding that apple, uh, what was it, the apple fry, fry bread, bread right there? Yeah. We all got to so try good. some of that. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, all the food and the people, and it's always such an exciting event. I can't, I always forget, like, how many people show up on Friday. Right. Yeah, event. it was packed this it year. It was packed. Especially compared to last year, because last year was a little drizzly, yeah. kind of cold, but the weather was just so perfect yeah. this mm -hmm. Friday. So, uh, big thanks to the Bayfield Inn for having us, because it was a wonderful setup again and we can't wait to be back next year yep. yeah let's yeah. go it was a little windy for the most part but uh, Bayfield a fantastic city and the fact you know it's just it just so happens to look even more beautiful in the fall right. uh, you've got to stop by and go there yep yeah mm -hmm. oh, so many tasty apples that fry bread oh. oh thank you so much for all the bites I took I yes. ate half of that <laughs> <laughs> it was the best though Delicious. and too so big good. for me to finish so you have as much as you want it was amazing oh, so good well we are enjoying fall right now but Minnesotans will once again be able to celebrate the icy beauty of winter in a new location this year the ice castles event has announced they're going to be setting up shop on the Minnesota State Fairgrounds is this the one that used to be in Stillwater I believe That's so, so. Oh. actually it actually was uh, in my hometown of Maple Grove oh. I think last year but you know, really? it got so hot to where or there was oh, yeah. not enough right. snow. Yep. Yeah, kind of was an issue. Oh, the, the fairgrounds are going to be perfect for that. Um, plans for the fairgrounds include a one acre winter playground featuring tunnels, caves, fountains, and slides built completely from ice and illuminated by colored lights. Construction on the site is expected to begin in November, and they usually open up by January if the weather allows. So I can't wait. I've never been to that before. I have um, not either. I think I my parents have gone, and they really enjoyed it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they change locations every single year, or is it usually in a set location? I've I, never. I don't think I, I've really heard of this I before. I think yeah. they're trying to find a more permanent, from what I could tell. I think it's a Utah-based company. They're trying to find a more, maybe a more permanent oh. Minnesota mm. spot to have it. Yeah, I feel like I've heard it being in Stillwater before, but Maple Grove sounds great, too. Uh, State Fairgrounds, though, you can just pack so many people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Parking, you know, yeah, is pretty good. Yeah, so. if they're not doing anything during the winter, I don't believe anyway. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's true. That's right. Yeah. I also enjoyed the uh, torch uh, there, the flamethrower person who was right. uh, in melting the ice out there. Oh my don't gosh. get too close to those uh, sculptures. Right. And I heard they're bringing back the Holodazzle uh, yeah. events this year mm -hmm. down in the Twin Cities, so that's going to be fun. Uh, not to mention our own Christmas City in the North Parade. Uh, yeah, let's go. That's Come on. The highlight too. of winter. That's like, what, the Friday before Thanksgiving? Yeah. Yeah, if Election yeah. Day is in a month, that's yeah. like coming up in like a month and three weeks or something like that. Gosh. That's wild. Yeah, talk about things that are sneaking up. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Somebody hit those brakes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, uh, listen to this new research, you guys. Giving college students one minute to check their phone has apparently led to higher test scores. Mm. So researchers with the Southern Illinois University offered brief phone or technology breaks 15 minutes into each class, and apparently those students averaged higher test scores and even used their phone less than those who are only given breaks to ask questions. Mm. I feel like I'm just in the wrong generation sometimes. Because <laughs> I'm like, why can't you just not Do be on your phone any? for an hour? Well, yeah. here's the, an hour. Here's the thing, Don't too. Look I at think, uh, you know, during the commercial breaks, we sometimes check our phones, mostly oh, yeah. for uh, answering our own questions that we pose True. due to our lack of knowledge on certain topics. Uh, but it's, it's kind of a nice <laughs> yeah. break. You know, I feel like there's, there's, there's higher, um, I don't know if you'd say performance in our shows once yeah. we look at our phones maybe a little bit. 
I would say, I remember being in class and sometimes if you're having like a texting conversation, even if it's like with your parents and then you kind of stop it in the middle of class, your mind is still on that conversation. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so then I wasn't able to like pay as good of attention because sure. I'm like, oh, I wonder what my mom said about that question I asked or, or, and, or sometimes it wasn't even as official as texting my mom. It was just my friends like, what yeah. are we doing later tonight? But I'm wondering about it and then I'm not able to pay attention to one of my professors talking about. So I could see maybe that would help me to get better grades just by being like, okay, now I know and I don't have to think about it anymore. Getting some life things figured out. When yeah. I had a Motorola Razor back in <laughs> middle school, my first time texting during class, I felt like such oh a gosh. rebel. Yeah. I was texting my friend. I was like, what are you up to? And they're like, I'm in class. <laughs> so. <Same. laughs> Why are you texting me right now? You know, college and having the phones today is, is different than having a Motorola Razor texting right. kids back You probably then. had to do the T9 texting I did. things. Oh my press gosh. the button like multiple times yeah. just to get the letter you Took need. Took a long time. So Took annoying. a long time. Man, it's tough. We had a tough as elementary or middle school. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dog owners like me are familiar with an age-old problem that's cleaning up after them, but a Minnesotan named Caleb Olson has created what he believes is the world's first aerial-bound dog poop removal system <laughs> called, I'm really glad I get to say this on TV, the Poop Copter. <laughs> It's Good called name. the poop copter. Uh, he says the drone can remotely scan for dog poop in a specific area like a backyard or maybe an open field. And then when it detects a mess in real time, it can swoop down and scoop it up. All right. Solson believes with modifications, he could, uh, his creation could also be used for other tasks like picking up litter or garbage. See, now that sounds um, like something that maybe some cities might invest in, you know, yeah. like drones to pick up garbage. If I was made of money, maybe I too would buy a drone to pick Whoa. up my dogs. That'd be awesome. Purchase uh, the poop copter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like it might be tough kind of in those, uh, like maybe like a wet day or like a uh, snowy day. That yeah, gross. <laughs> yeah. I feel like this should be a, a product that Rachel Hackbarth is testing. Right. <laughs> I don't know why we're not doing that. That's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the wind might pose a challenge. Oh, that's true. Yikes. That's a good point. Uh, right after the break, we're getting right into it. We're talking with a painting instructor here on Northern Life. Don't want to miss it. We'll be right back. My name is Carly. I'm with Northern Exposure Art. I've been doing these classes for about two and a half years now um, in the Duluth area. Studio Where am I going? Right here? Yeah, you're good right there. Turn. Go. Cool. Uh, you can take off your blindfold. Really? done painting in the past, but we have not done step-by-step -step instructional painting. Whoa. So we're going to be painting the lift Richard Carly. No beautiful. way! Oh, that's beautiful. So this one only pretty much requires two layers, give or take. The whole background is our first layer, so that's just all those dark colors. But then the second layer will be all the details, the bridge, reflection, clouds, all that fun stuff. You can cool. do this, right? We can oh, do it. Yeah, easily. Wait, this is going to be interesting. Yes. Okay, I'll be thrilled to have guidance. Yes, this is going to help a lot. Are there going to be a bridge or a blob? Yeah. Just wait. And the first thing I'm going to do is just give us a horizon. Just pick up a little bit of black. And I'm flattening my bristles because I'm using the edge of my brush like this. So I like to kind of squish, keep it chiseled. And then with just the edge of the brush, we'll come across. And you can decide too, you know, a lot of these paintings there's a lot of variables, you know, you can play around with horizon, you can add your own stuff, like, you know, with my trees, you can make more trees or less, you can make the bridge bigger or smaller. Pick up both of these blues, kind of pull them to the side, oh. still bring in a dash of black, but only a little bit. So we want to use this long horizontal brush stroke back here. Um, so it's feeling a little dark still. I might drop the black and just go with a couple streaks of my blue here. But that's when I kind of go back and forth, you guys. I might pick up some blues without black, or, okay. you know, black with a little bit of blue. Okay. Because that's, like I said, how we're going to get that marble. Mm -hmm. I can stop right there and be yeah. happy. <laughs> <laughs> and so with these colors, same brush. Now we're just switching the technique, switching the brush stroke. Because we want it to look like ripples formulating in the water. So now I'm going to hold my brush like this. Still longer brush strokes and tapered. I'm pulling it away from the canvas when I go back to both sides so you can see that kind of pointed taper. Most of my classes are landscapes. It's so forgiving and you can kind of make it up as you go, yeah. which I think is cool because you know, you, there's so many different ways to paint a tree. There's so many different kinds of trees. So you can kind of just like let go a little bit. So right now oh, we will do okay. two things. Yeah. We'll do the clouds and the stars. 
So all I'm doing is these kind of short little wiggly brush strokes and I'm just dancing my brush back and forth. Mm. Really light pressure, Ooh. barely touch the canvas, okay? okay? And just like mm. anything else, decide how much you want. So just like a light dancing of the bristles back and forth. Accumulo nimbus hunter. What is that? I think these are cirrus. Oh. <laughs> Messy or mess. I like messy. Yeah. Okay, let's do the stars. Now I'm holding my bristles parallel to the canvas and Ooh. pulling back to oh. allow that tension oh, in the bristles fun. to spray out. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited. So, and it's up to you once again how much you want. Oh, <laughs> how'd it go? <laughs> oh, oh now, cool. If you want to do, we can. Oh, oh wow, that's a big, that's a big star. That's a neutron star. <laughs> that is. Oh, that is that this looks is so really cool. Fun. I enjoy this part a lot. Yep, it's my favorite Isn't part. That, that's really, really letting go. <laughs> it's really fun to see what people add. I've had people <laughs> add UFOs or Loch Ness monsters oh. in Lake Superior. Oh, and, that's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, I do have to leave in a couple minutes. Do you? Yeah? Okay. Yes, I'm so. But you. Oh gosh. We could have Ben finish it off for so, it. Yeah. Okay. Alright, well, Ben, um, I'll be coming Thank back you. to see how uh, this turns <laughs> There's out. so much no pressure, sure Ben. The There's so much pressure. So, I want to make sure that you guys are using consistent pressure all the way through and you don't have to push very hard. Let the bristles do the work for you. If you do make a line and you feel like it's not thick enough or if it's too light, don't overlap it too much because we will start to pick up that background color. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> we can always do another layer once it's dry. And we've got a couple layers in the reflection. Pull the bristles away from the canvas as you go. And this is when you want to make sure you're covering up all of the white, but not necessarily all of the blue as you go. Play around with that placement. You don't want it blocky and choppy, right? We want it to look like the water's moving. So have some of these brush strokes come out a bit longer. I'm, I'm impressed. They're usually never this focused. <laughs> you can tell people are focused when everybody just gets really quiet. And that's what totally happened right now. Awesome. I love it. Moons. Should we do moons? Let's do a Let's moon. Do moon. Um, so decide where you want it. I always like it among my clouds. Start with like a little dot and then just like a little spiral. Once again, it's not going to be a perfect circle. I think it's like people, maybe you're nervous when you sit down, but once you get into it, you kind of let go a little bit and just like be in the moment. And I think a lot of us struggle with being in the moment in this day and age with technology and everything's moving so fast. And this is, you're forced, when you're being creative, you're forced to sit and live with it for a while. I, I just love that. Check out these final products. They're so good. I'm Carly actually very is proud. Such a great yeah. teacher because I don't know if you saw um, Hunter and I when we had to paint each other. It did not go well. <laughs> no, no. It did not go well. But this went really well. This went so well. Uh, Apparently, with <laughs> instruction, we're doing okay. You know, right? like as long as we have somebody telling us what to do at every single step, we can do all right, right? Yeah. Yeah. I know. We we'll get it done. I, I was so bummed I had to, to dip out of this one last minute, but Ben uh, carried on our painting fabulously, and I'm so impressed with the final product. So thank yeah. you, Ben. Yeah, it's Beautiful. good. Stuff. By the way, signed B and B yes. with Briggs and Ben. Look at that. Also, I, I should have ducked out early too and had Ben finish mine. <laughs> you know, I didn't get the, I didn't get the uh, correct, uh, I had a little thicker uh, bridge lines here, but uh, you know, Carly was a really good teacher. I just did not follow instruction when it came to, that, <laughs> came to those. But. Yeah, your bridge is well enforced. Thank that's yeah. not falling anytime <laughs> soon. Yeah, thick it's, bridge. Yeah, it's a thick bridge, ready to go. <laughs> My but. favorite part, I think, was putting the stars on where we got to like flip <laughs> yeah. the, the paint yeah. kind of at. That was really great. So she allows you to mm -hmm. be creative. Well, at the same time, uh, giving you instructions so that you take yeah. home a piece that you're super proud of and you could hang yeah. this on your wall. Yep, definitely hang great. it up. Is it going in the uh, nursery, Briggs? Oh, it could. Oh, That's oh a there great we go. Idea. Yeah. It kind of, if, it's the, if it's the color theme. Starry yeah, night. Starry, Starry night, night for the kid. Yeah, hopefully it will inspire him to sleep well. Oh, <laughs> please, so, please, please sleep well. Like I said, Carly, you're doing great stuff and you can 
be just like us, take a step-by-step -step class with there. They are either public or private classes. Uh, she's doing them at different breweries and businesses around town, so you can find her information over at northernexposureart.com. Well, hey, let's talk about the weekend. Hunter, not only a co-host, a meteorologist, a rock star. Painter. Uh, and a painter. Best and celebrity. <laughs> best celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even in the proper. Enthusiast of the uh, day Wednesday. Uh, yeah. but also, a, you get to officiate weddings. So you yeah. officiated a friend's wedding over the weekend. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It was such a blast up in Gilbert, Minnesota. We were at a campsite all weekend long, staying in the cabins over there. And, yeah, this is my third wedding I've ever officiated. I've wow. done just a couple friends here uh, here in there and how did it been, start how did I honestly it was a request that one of my friends wanted me to officiate the wedding Aww. and so you go online you do this sort of thing you become an ordained minister <laughs> it really isn't that hard it, it, it was awesome and then yeah the wedding turned out great so far three successful weddings Dang. and by the way they're all still married good so news that's good, good news. news too so well, if you have hunter officiate your wedding it looks like you'll stay together there you go that's call the number hunter. call the number below <laughs> 100% problem sure. yeah. i'm glad to hear you're actually ordained and you're not just getting up there and like, I'm under. Here he, here he. no one's actually married. It's just not nothing's official. It, it's unfortunate, oh, but no, it was an absolute good. blast all oh, weekend good. for sure. So Briggs, good. you had a fun weekend, a little I party did. action. Yep, got to spend time with some friends as well. Uh, my friend Ivy and uh, Jordy, they had uh, a really super fun first birthday party for their daughter Sylvie there. Yeah, oh. so they went oh. Matt and I. We went to the party. It was uh, it was bee themed. Yes, oh. so B one. Oh. Yes, uh, so we had a great time there. So. Uh, many little kids there. She has so many friends. They were running around just having a great time. Aww. And it was just like the perfect epitome of a, of a kid's birthday party. Good. She had a great time. And, and so did we. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. So How good. about that? Well, one's yeah. a big birthday. Yeah. It's it a, big, a birthday. big birthday. And yeah. uh, Ryan, you allegedly had one of the best meals of your life. Yeah. So if you're ever down to Rochester, Minnesota, <laughs> you got to go to Eddie's Ray de la Birria. If you ever oh, had Birria wow. tacos before, kind of like oh. slow cooked beef, this was in the shape of a pizza. And so I, I told my girlfriend I had to go get it. Uh, it was I had it twice that weekend. Uh, so if you're in the Rochester, <laughs> Minnesota area, you, you went need, to the same restaurant I two went separate to the same, times. Same time oh twice. God, Got the same thing both times. Only seventeen dollars for that. So. Uh, it was a lot of food. I did not finish it both times, but uh, that we, got the, amazing. we got the job done. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what Wednesdays mean for us here on Northern Life. We're going to be talking about tomorrow's show, and that doesn't work. We come back. Welcome back, folks. Let's uh, be honest for a second, because the rest of the show, there was no honesty <laughs> whatsoever. This time, right here, we're going to be honest here. Ceiling fans can be hard to install, and it's a process that usually requires a bunch of tools. So tomorrow, Rachel Hackbarth is testing out one ceiling fan that makers say all you have to do is twist it into your light socket. Oh. We'll see tomorrow during this week's uh, Does It Work if it actually does work. It looks relatively easy, right? i got to tell you, some fans, uh, you know, I've been some Airbnbs before where the fans look a little loose. So hopefully, you know, it's not, uh, it's, it's pretty sturdy. I it doesn't like. fall on yeah. the people, yeah. 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 Deal. How many Northern Life co-hosts does it take to install a <laughs> ceiling fan? Hopefully only one. Like yeah, sheesh. <laughs> uh, before we go today, the fall season usually is a big time for Harry Potter fans. And instead of the usual Hogwarts houses, Quick Trip posted to their Instagram, joking about what the Midwest Hogwarts houses should be. They suggested Quick Trip, Menards, Culver's, and Dollar General as the four different ones. Uh, but many people in the comments said Dollar General should have been swapped out with Fleet Farm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hmm, interesting. So what do you guys think? I think Dollar General, they said in the comments, is Kentucky-based. Well, yeah. uh, I would argue Target. Oh, That's Target another good one. Might be a Midwest mm -hmm. choice too, but Fleet Farm's a good one too. Yeah, put me in the Culver's house, please. Yep, I'm into please. that, 100%. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. Find some time to throw a line or just head outside to unwind. That's the life in the great north woods. Hike or bike, whatever you like. Get out in the day. Enjoy the night. Yeah, we got the life in the great north woods. Yeah, we got the life in the great north woods. Yeah, this is northern life.